As soon as I saw the tutorial, I just knew I had to get my hands on some fabric and make myself one of those jackets. That's one big beauty that sewing has offered me so far, and that is to venture out and make things that are tailored to my silhouette, that meets my needs, and just also happen to be one of a kind. And here we have it, the haul. Two pairs of jeans, a thicker thread in yellow to contrast the denim, and thicker needles to handle the thicker fabric. The standard needle that came with my sewing machine is a 9014, but I got the bigger 11018 for this project. The numbers simply indicate the diameter of the needle shaft in metric sizing and US or singer sizing. It's always good to coordinate the thickness of your needle and thread. I tried using a thicker needle with a thinner thread, but the thread kept breaking after a stitch or two, and I read that if you did the opposite and used a thinner needle with a thicker thread, then your stitches won't form properly. I also got some bobbins that unfortunately ended up not really fitting my bobbin winder, but looks cute for this segment. I also just finished watching the tutorial to make this pattern, and I have it out here on my notebook. I just wanted to make sure that all the proportions look correct and nothing was like out of whack. And if I do have to fix anything, I can fix it on this smaller scale now instead of later on the regular sized pattern. While I go ahead and cut out this pattern on actual paper, I will also be throwing the jeans in the wash, run them through cold water, just in case they bleed or shrink. They can do that now and not when I actually wear it. And if it shrinks then, then it's going to be a bigger deal than if it shrinks right now. And now that we have our patterns cut out, may the seam reapery, or dare I say, grim reapery begin. Cause that was surely what that felt like. Say that four times, will you? Seam reapery, grim reapery. Seam ribbery, grim ribbery. Seam ribbery, grim ribbery. Seam ribbery, grim ribbery. At some point, I found out that while I had been doubling down and ripping out stitch by stitch, there were some seams sewn in with, and please correct me if I'm wrong, some sort of a daisy chain stitch, which meant that I could just pull one end of the thread and the whole thing would unravel, just like that. Now you see me, now you don't.
For some seams, I just did straight stitches and overlocked the edges, but for other seams, I attempted a flat felled seam, which is one of the stronger seams you could sew to provide more structural integrity and durability to the garment. So I did that for seams that needed to bear more weight, like their shoulder seams, middle back, middle front seams. So let's say we have some fabric right here. This is the right side, this is the wrong side. And for a regular seam, I usually do one centimeter seam allowance, put the right sides together, and sew along this line here. And what you end up with is essentially something that looks like this your right sides like this. However, for a flat felt seam, I usually do 1.5 of my regular seam allowance, which is 1.5 centimeters, and we need more fabric to account for all the bulk that is going into this seam. Instead of having the right sides together like this, I'm going to put the wrong sides together like this. And even though I left myself one and a half centimeters, I'm going to slide this down only to the one centimeter mark, fold this over, and then sew my first line right here. And then I will open the side up like this so that I can hide this raw edge right here, like so. And then I will sew one line here at the edge and then another line at this edge right here. So that's my third stitch for this one seam. You essentially end up with both the raw edges hidden within the seam. And once you sew all these pieces together, it's basically four layers of fabric upon each other, which is why this seam is so sturdy. And you can see here that our seam allowance lines are lining up, which essentially gives us this piece to continue with this piece just as we want it to be. That's your flat felt seam. Another tip when working with bulk is sometimes your presser foot is already lifted, but you still can't fit your fabric underneath. It took me a while to realize I could lift my presser foot up even higher, like this. And then you might encounter this problem where your presser foot is now uneven, which would affect the quality of your stitches. So just grab some spare fabric you have lying around, Pull it up until it's thick enough and there you go. Or here, you can see that this side is thicker than this side. So I just placed some extra fabric along the seam to even out the presser foot. Works just as well. Last night I got all the individual pieces sewn together. So here's one arm, here's the back, here are the fronts. Also, somehow I keep on losing like a centimeter here, two centimeters there. There's a little more sleeve than body right here on this edge. So I'll have to adjust that as well. Also, somehow last night, a pin managed to fall into the pocket of my pajama bottoms and I went to sleep with it and somehow managed to not get poked by it at all until the morning came. I was making my breakfast and then I found it in my pocket. Yeah, so I got away with that. This is what we're working with. I have the sleeves and the body sewed together. I put in a collar as well, but I ran out of the dark fabric. So the back is just some patchwork. This bottom part here is going to cinch in the fabric a little bit. I've already pinned it down. So all I have to do is sew it. Uh, I also have to finish up the sleeves over here. And then we should be done. There were a few spots that needed tidying up, and so I got myself some hand needles and two thimbles just to see which one I liked better. Hand sewing was surprisingly therapeutic compared to machine sewing. Like, I could just sit there in silence without the whirring of the machine motor, or if I liked, I could even put on some soft music for that ambiance. At this point, I took the jacket back to my local vendor who kindly searched where the sleeves attached to the body. Her tip is that if I didn't have a serger, I could also make some bias tape and do bias binding to close off and secure the raw edges of the fabric. 
And because she didn't do denim hardware, she directed me to another spot in town who were more specialized at this. At one point I thought to myself, you know what, this jacket is so cool and dynamic looking, my future granddaughter should totally inherit this. But on second thoughts, maybe she can get a different jacket and I'll be wearing this one until I can't wear it no more. I mean, it is dirty enough from those flat felt seams I sewed in to last me a lifetime. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Flippery, 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 flippery. Flippery gibbet.